Hey everyone, welcome into my channel. It's Karen Lavender Clothesline. And if you're new to my channel, I am a full-time eBay reseller. I love to flip items on eBay for a profit. With this money, I support myself, I run my household, and I'm building an addition on my house. So welcome in, grab yourself something to drink. We're gonna do a haul video today. That means I'm gonna show you items that are recently picked up in the flea market. Roger, my boyfriend, or fiance, I should say, went to the flea market together on Tuesday morning and we picked up a bunch of great stuff. All right, hit that like and subscribe button. It's a haul video. So I have a table full of items right in front of me and I also have some art prints over there. I'm gonna to try to sneak some time in for doing those because I think they're really fun and interesting. But we're gonna get right into it. We're gonna get started with what's on the table. And item number one is this little carved ferret. I don't know if it's a ferret or a groundhog or what this is. And at first on the bottom, I thought the marking said Omid Linden, but I think it says Schmidt. I'm gonna show you the marking for it. Now, while I'm at the flea market, I am not running comps at all. I am just using my judgment and picking up things either that I find very interesting or a great buy-in price or I've sold before, so I have some kind of inkling of what they're gonna bring. But this little guy I spotted from very far away and knew I had to have him. Now, there is some question of whether he's wood or not. Roger took a look at him and said, yep, he's wood. And on the bottom, it does say, uh, wood carved, but I thought maybe the original was wood and then um, other materials were used to mass market it. I am still on the fence about it. I'm going to give it to Roger and say it's probably wood. It does not sound like wood to me. It sounds like wood a little bit, but it almost sounds like something else. Maybe it's the type of wood, but how adorably cute is this little guy? So when I asked the vendor what he wanted for him, he said, I want seven for him, but I'll take five. <laughs> he didn't even let me negotiate. Okay, so I bought him for $5. Once I got home, I did run a comp. I did find Schmid Linder. Um, that is the brand name. And this one says, it looks like Neat the Lion Monument. And it is made in Switzerland. So I paid $5 for him. I did not see any ferret weasel type animals listed or sold, but I'm probably gonna be asking about 45 for him. I just love him. I wouldn't even mind asking higher and sitting on him for a while, keeping him on my desk because I love him that much. All right, let's take a look at the next wood animal. This is a statue I believe I've picked up before. This is wood, hand carved, mid-century modern cat. He almost has like an Egyptian style to him. I love the eyes. Look at the shape of those eyes. And when I got home, again, I ran comps. A lot of uh, sellers were selling two of these as a pair. Now, I don't think it's meant to be a bookend, but it would be a very cool bookend. I only have the one, and I believe I paid... What did I pay for you? Do you remember? I don't remember. We're gonna to have to go back and watch that video. <laughs> and I'm expecting I'll probably get about $40 for him. So great find. And again, I love him. I love all carved wood animals when they're well done. So beautiful. I did see this big Santa face from quite far away. Look how good this is. I do think this one is vintage. Now I'm sure there are reproductions, but by the look of it, this whole thing is covered with glitter, first of all. Do we love glitter? Yes, we do. Except when it gets on your hands and on your face, then we don't love it. And this is what the back looks like. I do not see any marking. Somebody's wire is still there and the brass hanger, and I can feel glitter just raining down on me. But he is fantastic. And what did I pay for him? I am so sorry, guys. I have no idea what I paid for anything. I will try to go back and watch the video and put it on the screen of what I paid for items. I did not comp him. I didn't need to. Next up is an item that I see a ton of this brand in the thrift store. 
they're almost always broken. I'm going to say 99% of the time, these things have chips and I don't pick them up. This one has chips and I did pick it up, which is so rare for me, knowing it has damage and I took it anyway. Capitamonte Lovebirds on a branch. So gorgeous. This thing is so finely made and the flowers do have the tiniest bit of chipping. Like you can see this flower right here, which don't mind my nails. Two o'clock is my appointment today. 2.15, 2.15. Um, this little flower petal has a little bit of a chip, but not bad on this one. And so sweet. What did I pay for this? Eight dollars. So I imagine this one's going to bring good money. Capitamonte has a lot of like chunky, bigger pieces. And um, I loved this for the, for the delicate nature of it. So gorgeous. If I collected, I would keep this, but I'm not a collector. So hopefully this will bring very good money. Again, I'll comp it for you. If I find the same one and it is sold, I'll put it on the screen so we can all take a look at what this will bring. But either way, I think the beauty of it is going to sell it. So I think it's because I am currently looking at all kinds of bathroom accessories for the new bathroom going in our addition. I'm just very drawn to soap dishes. Now, I really don't use bars of soap. I think we're all using pump soap, but when I see a gorgeous soap dish, I have to have it. Can be used for trinkets or just different items. A lot of times dishes like this hold my camera batteries or small little pieces that I need for filming. I believe this is alabaster and it is just gorgeous. Um, and what did I pay for you? Mm, again, no clue. My mind is all a whirl, but when I see something like this and it's this beautiful, I mean, it's carved from one piece of stone. How could you not love that? So I said yes to it. On one of the dollar tables, I did find these two little figurines. They look to be like little, little garden babies, little fairies, little, I don't know, what are you called? Tinkerbells. I love these. They are not marked. I believe they are a plastic resin, the old tap test by the ear. And this one is in blue. The face is very good. I had to peek if it was showing. And for a dollar each, I thought that was a great find. I'm thinking I'm going to keep the two together since they are blue and pink and make a pair out of them. And again, I'll have to comp them, but I don't imagine these are going to bring very high amount because they are a plastic resin. Now, if these were like a fine porcelain or something like that, a bone china, I would probably get a little bit more for them, but um, either way, I was happy to rescue them from the $1 table. These next two items are mid-century modern, but they are quite common. And they are these metal and glass candle holders. So they are marked $5 each. I believe I offered eight and the gentleman took them. And I bought these because the color is so beautiful. It's a true like marigold orange, I'm going to call it. Look how pretty these are. And I thought these were fantastic. Sometimes when I'm in the thrift store, I see the very big pieces like this. I've seen lamps like this, and I think these are great and they fit into a lot of different decor. To me, these could be Victorian. Um, they could be mid-century modern 50s or 60s. I'm going to guess 60s because of the color. And I just fell in love with them. I don't see any chips or cracks. I love this bumpy, rounded, hobnail type texture. So I got the two of those for $8. Again, I don't think these are going to bring a lot because I think they are quite common. I think a lot of this was produced, but I'm thinking probably 30 to 35 for the pair. If you watched the flea market video, I picked up this fossil handbag. So it's a little crossbody. Kind of like a saddle bag and the seller wanted I believe 10 or 15 I offered six and when you're outside and you're shopping at a flea market it is very hard to detect cigarette smoke smell and unfortunately that is the case with this little bag she did accept six so I didn't overly pay for it which was good but on a sad note it does smell of cigarette smoke 
on a leather or a faux leather bag, very hard to get out. Now I will wash the whole bag by hand, not in the washing machine, probably with a leather soap, maybe even like a, like a Murphy's oil soap. I will give it a good washing and rinse it. So I don't immerse the bag. I just use a fairly saturated cloth and then I will put it outside to air and I will finish it with Martin's balsam. A lot of work for a little bag. Now it wasn't the brand Fossil, although I do like Fossil items that made me buy it. It was the crossbody. I think this is a perfect size. The strap is great and the style does well in my store. So I was thinking I could probably get $19.99, but now if I can't get rid of the cigarette smoke, you gotta wait for a person that does smoke or doesn't mind smoke. And I really don't like to do that, but when I'm outside shopping at a flea market, I should have smelled it and I did not because it's very hard to pick up that scent. But then once you bring it in the house, it's more evident that it has a cigarette smoke smell, but still $6, not a terrible loss, but not really a successful buy. This next handbag is a successful buy. Fell in love, totally fell in love with this thing. So it is a vintage, gorgeous leather messenger bag. This is what it looks like. It doesn't get any prettier than this. So beautiful. This is what the inside looks like. It almost has like a green canvas, like a linen canvas interior. Fairly clean inside. So that is what it looks like. I did not see any branding. I might be just missing it, but I'm almost thinking that this is just artist made, you know, handmade. But I don't see any kind of, oh, there's a little star. Okay, hold the phone. Where is my magnifying glass? Oh, I'm so prepared. <laughs> I have it right in front of me. So the snap on it does say something, I think. What does that say? Wow, I can't even tell. I'm going to hold it in front of the camera. Maybe the camera will pick it up and we'll be able to read it that way. I'm going to have to go back and watch the footage and, um, and see if I can tell. I'll also do a Google image search on the writing on the snap and I'll probably take a picture of it and blow the picture up. But this thing is just stunningly beautiful. No idea what I paid. Again, I'll put it on the screen, but how could you not love a bag like this? So the Fossil, not so great. This one, very great. One of the first items I grabbed when I got to the flea market was this angel doll. Look at those feet. Whenever the feet are like this and they're very like primitive style country looking, I gravitate towards these because I have done very well with dolls like this. Now, let me just say, if the doll is totally handmade with a hand painted face, I do a lot better. This one, unfortunately, is manufactured. And the way I tell is the first thing I do is turn the skirt inside out to see if there is a tag. Sure enough, this one has a tag. Don't know if that's going to show. And this one is Tender Heart Treasures, I think. Yes, that is the branding on it. But still, she is just so sweet. And, um, <laughs> and her hair is flopping in her face. Look at that face. Now the face might be hand done, might be printed. I'm thinking it might be printed on there, but she is just adorable. And I grabbed her because I liked her that much. Can I just say when I am in the thrift store or at an auction or even at a flea market, when I find an item with glass beaded fringe, whether it be on a piece of clothing, on a lampshade, or on just a home decor piece, I have a tendency to give that a, a serious look because items with glass bead fringe seem to do well. I don't know if there are collectors out there that are collecting anything with that type of fringe, but I spotted this item and you can kind of see why it's well loved. It's just so beautiful. So when I saw this, I didn't even realize really what I was looking at. I mean, it does have like a satin rosette. I think this is just a polyester satin. I don't think it's silk. 
She wanted $5 for it, but I did bundle items together with that vendor. Let me just say that if you're at a flea market, it's always good to ask if they are negotiable if you bundle items. In other words, if you're gonna buy more than one thing, um, you want to start to make a pile to show the vendor or the seller that you're serious and that you might be you know, dropping some money at that table. So this was part of a bundle and it is actually a nightlight cover. So this is not complete. You need the piece that plugs into the outlet and then this piece would clip on the bulb that's on the outlet. It doesn't really sound so safe to me. I guess the bulbs don't get hot. Make sure if you're using this, your bulb doesn't get hot because it is fabric. But do we love a good fringe swaying? Yes, we do. Just so beautiful. It's in great condition. It doesn't really look like not that much dust or dirt. And um, I just grabbed it. So really cool find. This next piece, I have no idea what this is. Not a clue. And I looked at it and I asked the gentleman who was selling it about it. He showed me how it worked, which truthfully, I don't even remember how it works. It is a carved flower sculpture, we're gonna call it. So these all close up by twisting it, I think. I don't even remember how this works. But the flower, it's a lotus flower, closes up like this. Well, it closes up prettier than that. And then when you twist it, the petals come down. And it does have this little flower knob. So I'm thinking the flower knob goes maybe in that middle hole and then you twist it and it closes. You can tell I have no idea what I'm talking about. But for $5, I thought, oh yeah, I'm grabbing that. It looks to be handmade. I wish I could remember how this works. I'm gonna have to play with it. I did get it open and closed when I brought it home, but I don't remember how I did it. But this is fantastic. What an oddity. And that's probably a key word that I will use. If there aren't any on eBay or if there are very few, I will probably put curiosity or oddity in my listing. Now, a lot of times those keywords are used for really strange items. I mean, you can go ahead and put those words into an eBay search, but be prepared to be a little surprised. There's all kinds of weird things that people are selling, but a lot of times if you have an unusual item, those are keywords you wanna use. So I went ahead and picked this up. I still think this is gonna sell. I think somebody's gonna want this. And if I'm not mistaken, this is all handmade, crazy. Crazy good. A few of you have commented on the pig tin. I love a pig. I love a good pig. And this is what it looks like inside. I think this is made out of shaped tin. And whoever painted it did a great job. Very folk art looking and um, it's wall hanging. There are two, two little holes here. And again, I thought this was fantastic. So I think I'll do quite well with this. People are already asking for it. You gotta love that when you just show an item in a video and people are like, oh, I want that. <laughs> so thank you to all of you who show interest in the items that I pick up. All right, my garbage men are coming down the road, so hopefully they'll be nice and quiet because I'm filming a video. I think they're right here. So we're probably gonna hear the garbage truck. If it gets loud, I'll have to stop. The next item that I picked up was a wood box. It is a round box with a beautiful scene on it. This is what it looks like. This is the inside. Now I believe this box is lathe turned and I can see the little hole has been filled in of where this was attached on the lathe. The gentleman that was selling it said this is all hand painted. When you go to a flea market, an auction house, a thrift store, a yard sale, you cannot take the person's word for it 100%. They might feel that they're right, but it might be their opinion. So I'm really gonna have to put this underneath, it's catching, it's catching the glare, underneath my uh, magnifying glass to see if I can see the paint strokes in it. Something tells me this is not all hand done. It might be that it is like a, like a paper print and then they varnish over it. So my best advice is to Google what you have when you find something and see if there's a website stating what it is, or you can put it into an eBay search and see if enough people are calling it hand painted. 
Again, that doesn't guarantee that that's what it is, but nonetheless, a beautiful box, and I was so happy to buy it. All right, I think the last item from the table I'm gonna show is this rooster dish. And I was very intrigued by it because it is all black, it is stone, and the bottom says O-A-X-A-C-A, -A -A, Oaxaca, Mexico. The vendor called it black on black. He said, do you know what this is? And I said, a rooster, and we laughed, and he said, this is called black on black. I don't know if the original stone is black and then it's polished. Um, I believe that is what he said. I'm gonna show you the bottom. Leave a comment down below if you know about this art form or this, um, this piece of what exactly goes on with it. I'm gonna show you the bottom. Hopefully you were able to see that clear. I have a tendency to love roosters and frogs and pigs. <laughs> okay, I love all animals and chickens. I'm not really big on snakes, I just gotta say. But I thought this was great fun and I really like it. And this is a piece I'm tempted to keep. I just have so much going on in the house. I think you can see a little bit of the, I still have a bathroom in my dining room. Uh, we did get the tub delivered and uh, we are making great progress on the addition. We are just waiting for the foundation walls to dry. I believe that's what's going on. And uh, we're just waiting for the walls to go up. Can I say, I couldn't be any more excited. Not only is the addition coming out beautiful, the company that's doing it is just, I can't speak highly enough. And I've built a house before. I've had construction before. And a lot of times it's very hard to just have patience with the teams that you hire. This team is just, I can't speak highly enough about them. Not only is their craftsmanship beautiful, um, but their design ideas are great and they are just so courteous and they really care about making the whole process as pleasant as possible, which is very appreciated. On top of all of that, I get to live with the man that I love. Looks like we're gonna be married mid-June. Now don't hold me to that, I'm not sure, because we are basing it on the progress of the house, because the house has to be finished for Roger and all his stuff to move in. And I understand it's going to be a challenge because neither one of us have lived with somebody for a long time. But I am super excited and super grateful to be able to live with the man I love and marry him at this age in life. I never thought that this would happen. So for all of you people out there that find yourself maybe alone or even in the latter stages of life, Fairy tales do come true. This is just amazing. I have just met the most wonderful man. And um, yeah, you can tell I'm over the moon excited. So I'm very excited for walls to go up on the edition when that happens. Of course, I'm gonna be filming for you guys. And um, yeah, I don't know how I went down that rabbit hole, but here we are. All right, we're gonna take a look at the artwork over here. I didn't know the artist. I didn't know anything, but it's so stinking cute. I had to buy it. All right, we're gonna take a look at that. All right, so this next group of artwork caught my attention very quickly. I'm gonna show you a few of the pieces and then we're gonna talk about who the artist is and what I have here. So here is the first print. Hopefully that glare, there we go. Will not bother it. This one is called This is the Life. I think these are fantastic. So as you can see, hand signed on the bottom by the artist. This is Sam Toff, T-O-F, -F, I think it's T-O-F-F. -F. Let me see what it says on the back. T-O-F-T, -T, Toft. And I just love her work. So luckily on the back, it does say what I have here. It's a fine quality, limited edition. Uh, it's copyrighted reproduction of the original artwork and it's hand signed and numbered by the artist. So what I have here, are hand signed and numbered by the artist. This is a copyright limited edition. So this is the first one. And on the back, you can see it has the original price sticker of $72. I think that's a euro. Um, not quite sure about that. So figure about $70 this sold for. 
how fun and wonderful. Now some of the matting does have a little bit of dirt. I know you can use um, a gummy racer to get that off. I call it dirt. It's probably fallout because a lot of these are chalks or pastels. So that is the first one. Here is a large one. Unfortunately, it was not under plastic like that first one. This is fantastic. I love these. And this one is called A Balloon For You. And you know, it's funny because it is a print, but it looks like it is an original um, chalk or I would call this chalk or pastel. And I thought this was great. This is number 38 of 235. The first one was 31 of 335. Here's a favorite, a note to say. It has a little balloon floating away with a note. This one actually has a card, a greeting card in the back. Maybe came with it or maybe somebody stuck that in. I'm gonna to have to pull that out and see what that's about. But it does have Sam Toff's information on all of them. So that is wonderful. That one's in plastic. Again, this next one is in plastic. Rebel Rebel leads on. So it shows a, um, a dog walking path. How cute is that? I just love these. This one went for 72 also. Dancing with Stripes. So I guess the cat's name was Stripes. And that is what the back looks like. Number 147 of 295. This one has a little bit of foxing on the mat. Foxing is like a, a brown dotted, um, I think it's actually a mold or a fungus foxing. And it's usually on older paperwork that gets affected by a little moisture. The artwork itself is in great condition. It's just the matting that needs to be changed. I will probably sell these right in this matting. I won't take it apart. And I will disclose that the matting has different issues and that the artwork looks really good. Okay, and the last one. <laughs> these are so whimsical and so fun. A little home for Big John. So that is that one. I think these are gonna do well. This is number 82 of 385. And again, the paperwork that shows what it's all about. Okay, so what did I pay for? One, two, three, four, five. I have six of them. I paid $40 for six of them, which was a phenomenal price. I had asked the gentleman what he wanted for them. He thought about it for a couple of moments, and then he said, I want 40 for all of them. I couldn't grab them quick enough. I said, I'm not gonna even barter with you, or what is that called? I'm not gonna even negotiate. That is a wonderful price. And I did buy those from him and a few other pieces and wound up giving him a few extra dollars because I felt it was more than fair. All right, everyone, so that is the video for today. Just know that anything you saw in this haul is gonna take a while to get into my eBay store because I do have that large pickup that I'm processing at the same time. So I'm thinking this is probably gonna take a week to 10 days. Some of you are already messaging me of the items that you want. Just know that I'm unable to, at this time, list something on eBay and then contact everybody that wanted it to say, you know, hey, the item is on. Some of you have asked, uh, saying, hey, when you list this, can you let me know? I'm sorry, there's so many people that do that. That would just take up such a big amount of time. But what you can do is you can go into my store and um, put in just the name of the item and do a quick search for it, but you can put an alert on eBay. Did you know that when you're looking for a certain item, let's say you're looking for this mid-century modern carved wood cat, you can put an alert on eBay. Anytime anybody lists something like that, your phone will give you an alert to say something new has been listed. All right, guys, so that is the video for today. I just want to thank you guys again for everybody wishing Roger and I congratulations on our engagement. Love you guys. Hit that like and subscribe button. And as always, go out and get what's yours.
so I'm just going to pull a few solds and I'm going to show you what's going on around here. So I did do that large uh, buyout and I'm still processing that and going through it, but I am making really good progress. These blue Ikea bags are all items that I got listed and need to be put into the system. So we're in good shape that way. Coming over here, these two racks are the racks where I have hung the items from the buyout and um, they all need to be assessed and cleaned and all of that good stuff. Here is a snapshot of what this looks like. We're in good shape going forward. My goal is to get a lot more of this packed down. So I have been working on that. Over here, the large items in the corner. You guys know this corner. This is where I've moved the large items. And a few of these are um, going to be pulled out of here. So that is really good. All right, what else is going on? These are the items I got listed in the past couple of days. This and a lot more. Uh, shoes need to be packed in clear bags and put down on the shoe rack. So I'm going to do that today. All of these items got listed, so I have to work all of this into inventory. Here is a cool item that I picked up in the buyout. These are vintage buttons, and this is probably my favorite item that uh, was included in the buyout. I do have these listed. Some of them are metal and rhinestones. None of them are marked, unfortunately. When you find buttons from like St. John or Burberry, um, items like that, those buttons can bring really good money, and I would have separated those out. None of these are marked that I can tell, but still a very fun item to list and to go through. Here are the Pottery Barn rug pillowcases or pillow shams, and I got those listed. So hopefully I'm going to work all of these hard goods into this situation here. Now eBay sales have been a little bit slow, but this morning we're going to pull the few items that sold since yesterday afternoon. Okay, so the first item we're going to pull is a beautiful blouse I love. This is Old Navy. I feel like the people that design for Old Navy are looking at other companies' items and seeing what sells because Old Navy has some really cute things, and I did pack this down, so it's going to be in one of these bags. It is a linen wrap top, sold for $19.99. I believe I paid $4.99 for this, and I'm going to look for it in the bags and show you what it looks like. Okay, so here it is here. wasn't very hard to find. It was right in this blue bag. And once I get these worked into the bins, you know, much easier to find. But truth be told, when I'm at this point, if I have like 10 or 20 bags of inventory, yeah, there's no rhyme or reason to any of this. I just have to dig. So sometimes that's the nature of the business. Okay, Old Navy Extra Large Blouse going out. Super pretty. Wish it was my size. The next item going out is actually a group of doll clothing patterns. I pick up patterns when they are vintage clothing or specialty items, anytime there's a pattern for like doll clothes, things like that. This is a mixed lot of 13 doll clothing uh, sewing patterns by Simplicity and others. And I do put inventory A afterwards so that I can keep track of which patterns are which because patterns can definitely get mixed up. $32.50. And I just picked up a huge lot of these and have been selling them at a great profit. All right. So now we're a little tight in here. Let's see if we can go this way. I still have to reconfigure this, but it's not really bothering me. It's going to be in sewing and fabric. So I'm going to pull this bin. Okay, so here's what this bin looks like. I have all kinds of sewing notions, uh, fabric, different brocade trims, and patterns. So here it is here, marked with an A for the inventory. And like I said, $32.50. I imagine I paid less than a dollar for these. So again, great profit. I always look at sewing patterns. The next item that sold is a pair of Brooks Brothers Red Fleece Men's Dress Pants. Uh, they're new with tags, and the tag says $79.50, and I got $40 for them. They are a neutral color, so they're going to be in this bin here, men's neutral pants. So anything that's not a jean or not denim, I separate out, and these are the dark pants, and these are the neutral pants. Pretty much they're going to be in those two bins, and since these pants are neutral color, I'm going to pull this bin. They should be in there. All right, so let's pop this off. So as you can see, I have like khaki color, 
These are like a tobacco color. That's not them, but that's what I call those mountain khakis. And you can see all sort of tops, beiges, grays. And I think I see them here. Brooks Brothers, new with tags, red fleece pants, 34 by 32. And there is the tag showing it's new. So we're going to pull those out. Just pop these back in and go on to the next item. Pretty sure I paid $4.99 for this pair of pants. I don't pick up pants when they are overpriced. A lot of times the stores in our area are making pants ridiculously high, and I just won't buy in at that price. There is so much clothing out there for resale that I don't feel I should ever have to pay up for anything, at least in this area in Pennsylvania. I mean, look at this stuff. All of this is bought in at a very low price. I don't feel like I should succumb to paying way too much in the thrift stores. I'll just bring my business elsewhere. So most likely I paid $4.99 for these and $40 they brought. This next item is a Duluth fleece knit jacket. It's a woman's 1X in blue. So I have pulled this bin, jackets extra large through plus, and it will be in here. I think I see it right under here. Duluth 1X women's jacket. It's kind of like a sweater jacket or a fleece jacket, I guess I should say. Zip up. And it brought $22. And I think I paid $5.99 for this one. It's kind of like a, not a space dye, but it kind of has a mix of black and blue in it. Really pretty and very warm. So $22 that brought. The last item is Kala. And it is a woman's poncho scarf. So I do have to figure out where I've put this. It could fall into many categories. I think I have put this in sweaters because that's what I considered it. $17.50. We're going to go to sweaters and it is a size small and it's a print. So women's sweaters are on this side. And as you can see, I have red tape over this window. This window is the basement window that's going away. And it did get broken during construction, but that's all getting pulled out anyway. <laughs> all the craziness. But, you know, I have to say the workers, not to go down a rabbit hole, but the workers were great. The minute they realized that some gravel had hit the window, they came in, they pulled out these racks and vacuumed all the glass off the floor, which it wasn't even that much. I would have been happy to do that, but I can't say enough good things about this construction team. It has been a really good experience so far. So very happy about that. All right, back to this sweater. Small prints. So it is either going to be in red, pink, and orange or, yeah, or blue, cream, and brown. So now I have to figure out where I put this. It would not be in darks. I'm thinking it's in red, pink, and orange. I'm going to pull this down. Okay, so that's what this bin looks like. Oh, I love this print. This has nothing to do with anything. This is Ann Taylor. This is vintage. I love a good metallic thread sparkle sweater. All right, stay focused. That's not it. That's Carol Little. Oh, here it is here. Kala Small Cropped Sweater. I've never heard of Kala before, but I really liked this Aztec looking knit. All right, so this one brought $17.50. And again, I might have paid $2 for this one. I believe this was part of the $2 sale. Goodwill in our area is really starting to mark items up. And now while you think that might be a bad thing, a lot of times this is working out good for me because they will overprice something and then nobody buys it. And then it comes into the half price sale. And on the last day of the sale, it's $2. So a lot of times I am scoring items that they overpriced for $2, cheaper than what it would have been if they would have left it at the fair pricing. I hope all that's not confusing. All right, I got to get busy. I'm going to ship these few items out. Now, more solds will come in over the course of the day. I might ship a second time because Fridays are usually busy. But for now, I'm working on all of this situation, which I love organizing. So this is not work to me. You can see all the stuff that I recently picked up and showed in videos that I'm going to be putting all of that away. I did work through the 20 bags, the big hefty bags from the buyout. And these two bags are packing supplies now. So little boxes. I still would like to neaten this up. This kind of stuff drives me crazy. But because I'm packing in boxes every day, I can't fold down boxes. I did try that one time. You can see this is left over from it where I broke all my boxes down. And then every time I needed a certain size box, 
I couldn't tell what was what. So um, we're just going to have to fix this situation. This is all bubble wrap and lighter packing fill. Yeah, so we're still in good shape here. This is still going to be Roger's size. Right now, I am stalking Facebook Marketplace to buy shelving for this, uh, for Roger's side. So that's what we are up to. And I have all of this to put away today. All right, guys, hit that like and subscribe button. And as always, go out and get what's yours.